Hello and welcome to the Cyberline YouTube channel. My name is Ray and in this video, My Robot Lab Part 5, we're going to look at the servo service. So I have my Arduino Nano as created in Part 2. And to that, I've connected two servos onto pins 4 and pins 5 respectively. The servos I'm using are these uh, JX Servos PDI HV5523MG. These are rated up to 8.4 volts, but will work quite happily at 6 volts, which is what I'm running at today. So, on our My Robot Lab web interface, we're going to go to Runtime, and in here we're going to create our first servo. And in this case, we're going to call it Survey 4 because I've connected it to pin 4. The service type is Servo. So we'll select that from the list and start the service. Now we'll go to Servo 4 that we've just created. And we'll go to Control. We are going to select the Nano as the controller. And we're going to select pin 4 and then Attach. I'm also going to enable the auto disable. This is set at three seconds and will turn the servo off after three seconds of no movement. This is handy if you're using it to hold something that is close to your set point, but not quite, and it causes it to draw more power than it should. It can heat up a servo and cause them to fail. So if, when they're close to where you want them to stop, if you turn them off, they stop drawing power and they don't fail prematurely. All right, so now we can play with the servo position. And you can see the servo moving quite happily. Now, one of the things that we've got is called limits. Here we can set a rest position. So if I can move that to there. If I click rest, it'll always return to that 90 degree position. But if 90 degrees is not where I want the rest, I can move that to say down here at 45. And then when I click on rest, it'll go to that 45 position each time. So move, drag the arm up, hit rest, it'll return to that same spot every time. So this is under the limits. I'm going to just going to put that back to 90 for now and go rest and it jumps back there. Now you can limit the range of your input. So your input, in this case by default it's 0 to 180 but you might have a, a narrower limit. You might have 0 to 90 or 45 to uh, 135 or something along those lines. So you can actually change the range of your input. And this is an input value, not what's being sent to the servo. What's being sent to the servo is on the output range. So if you wanted to limit the range that your servo could move, we can run that to say 45. And then when we move this down, you'll notice that it jumped because it recentered that center position halfway between here because our input range is 0 to 180 still. So 90 is in the middle of that input range. When we reach all the way down to zero, you'll see it stopped at that 45 degree position instead of going all the way. If I move this bottom limit back down to the zero, you'll see it'll now go all the way. And the same works for the upper limit. So if we say that's where our upper limit should be, we can now no longer go any further than that point. Now to help guide with setting these limits, you'll note that you've got your marker at the top which shows the input. And when you bring your bottom limit off the upper setting at 180, it'll show another little mark on the bottom line. And that's where it currently is at. If you bring that down to there, 
that will set your bottom limit or your upper limit in this case and it won't go past that point anymore so we can use that for both ends so if I want to set to 28 degrees and that will now be as far as we can move it that way all right so let's just take that back out for now I don't need that limit on and go back to rest now let's create a second servo in this case we'll call it servo 5 also called servo start the servo go into the servo 5 service back to control again we do an auto disable set pin for 5 and our controller will be now and attach now back over to here and you'll see the second servo now works and it has the same ability to set limits and the like you can also adjust your maximum speed on a servo with this speed control. So if, if you find that it turns too fast and causes your robot to fall over uh, or twist unexpectedly, you can limit the maximum speed. Now there's another feature I wanted to show and that is synchronizing two servos together. And it's very easy to do, but you do need to do it in Python. So, what we're going to do here is use this little short script. It's a single line. It's servo four. So that's the name of the service we did for this one. Dot sync, which tells it to run the sync command. And we're going to pass in the name of this one, which is servo five. And if we execute that, So we've executed that, go back to four, and now both these servos will turn together, even though I'm only driving servo four. Now this will obey the limits of both server, or like each servo will have its own limit set. So one of the things I'm gonna try and do here is invert so when this one turns, it is now turning in the opposite direction to what it was. Let's go back to Survey 4. And now you can see they both operate in opposite directions, but synchronize. So the synchronization works on the input side. And so each servo will be treat, treat with its own limits on the output side. Okay, that'll do for this video. If you like these videos, don't forget to click on like, subscribe, ring that notification bell so you're notified when other videos come out. It's also a form of support that helps the channel a great deal and costs you absolutely nothing. If you'd like to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon account and you can join my VIPs, Go Lucky and Lorenz Berger, as well as my builder Patreon, El Morales 45. You'll find a link in the description below. I also have a Discord channel. You can talk to either Fred or myself or one of the other members of our growing community. You'll find a link in the description below. And we'll see you in the next video.